Right, in this video, we're going to cover the application component of the topic, which is uh, moving coil with loudspeakers. So we should be able to describe the components of a moving coil with loudspeaker, which include the cone, the magnet structure, uh, coil, and the supporting frame, and also explain the action of a moving coil with loudspeaker. So there are different types of speakers that are available. However, we're just going to focus on the moving coil with loudspeaker because they're reliable, simple, and easy to produce. So first, I want to cover how sound is produced. So a sound wave is a periodic sequence of compressions and rarefactions that are transmitted through air. Uh, they, as they vibrate back and forth, they periodically create regions of high and low density, and this produces a sound. So the frequency of a vibration determines the frequency of the sound wave and hence the pitch of the sound. So for example, a low musical note is one that has a low frequency, uh, meaning a long wavelength, and a high musical note is one with a high frequency of vibration. Now what a loudspeaker actually does is converts an electrical signal into a sound wave using this information. So a speaker is actually a cone made of paper or plastic or Kevlar or some other material and it produces the actual sound wave. So the speaker, as you can see in this diagram, it will move back and forth uh, producing areas of low and high pressure throughout the air and our ear can pick this up and we hear it as sound. Uh, this is an important slide to remember. Uh, it covers the components of the speaker that you need to know. So we've got a side view, a cross section here, and also a front view. So the speaker is actually a cylindrical shape, however this cross section view just is used to demonstrate um, what parts are involved. So we've got a permanent magnet, um, which is cylindrical as you can see by this diagram. We've got a cone that slips in between uh, the parts of the magnet and also um, a moving coil. So this coil is actually just wire that's wrapped around. As you can see here, it's just wrapped around part of the speaker. So how exactly do the speakers produce the sound? Well, when we've got the magnetic um, parts of the speaker here, you can see that there's a, a field, magnetic field between them and this goes from a north to a south being that if there was a north dipole placed in the field, it will travel in that direction. So you can see here the arrows are pointing up, here the arrows are pointing down. Now what we've also got, let's say for example, we've got these uh, coils that have a current running through them. Now remember the current, if it's marked with an X, it's going into the page. And if it's marked with a dot, it's going out of the page. And you can remember that by an arrow flying. Uh, if it's flying into the page, you can see the tail. If it's flying out of the page, uh, you can see the arrowhead just as a dot. So if the current is flowing into the page, we can use our right hand rule, uh, the palm rule. So what we do, we point our hand, uh, our fingers will be pointing up to represent the magnetic field. Our fingers will be pointing into the page, representing uh, the way the current is going in the wire, which means our palm will be pointing in the direction of the force. So in this particular case, uh, the force will be to the right. Now we can also see that if we applied it uh, to the bottom part of the magnet, uh, the force will be in the same direction. However, the magnetic field and the current are in opposite directions. So what happens is, is when the current is flicked to one, either positive or negative, it moves in one way. And this is what you can see with the cone here in this animation. Now again, in this case, uh, we can have the magnetic fields in the same direction. However, if our current is flowing in the opposite direction, so it's a negative, a negative current applied, we have dots at the top here instead of crosses, meaning the current is going out of the page. And what that means is that the force is going to the left. So this is creating a rarefaction in the cone, being that the cone is being pulled back. Uh, in the previous example, it was a compression. So alternating these uh, to a certain frequency is what produces our sound. When a microphone records a sound, uh, the microphone converts the sound into electrical signals uh, that are transferred to a recording medium. If it's a very simple sound, it might look like this. Now you can see on this graph, the I represents current and the X axis is time. And you can see that you've got a positive current here and then it, it changes to a negative current. Now the positive current would be the compression of the speaker, moving the speaker to the right. 
and the negative might be the speaker moving to the left being a rarefaction. So a combination of these will cause the speaker to move, producing this wave. So when a speaker receives a signal from an alternating source, which is determined by the original source of music or, or sound, uh, the current uh, that travels through the moving coil uh, changes from either negative or positive, causing the speaker to move at whatever frequency. Now you can see that in this uh, animated diagram here. We've got first a positive uh, current that's running through, pushing the speaker to the right, and then it switches to negative, uh, pulling the speaker back causing a rarefaction. And you can see as this movement happens, um, whatever frequency that is set to uh, causes the sound. So when we turn up the volume uh, on a speaker, what we're actually doing there is increasing the current that's being sent to the speaker. When this happens, uh, the force on the coil is increased, um, and then this increases the distance the coil and the cone move. So this increase in pressure um, in the compressions and the rarefactions um, increases the intensity of the sound wave and we interpret this as a louder sound.